to worship comes from a hymn number 12 in your hymnal but I will read it joyful joyful we adore you God of glory Lord of love hearts unfold like flowering before thee hail the sun above Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness. Fill us with the light of day. Thou art giving and forgiving. Ever blessing, ever bless. Wellspring of joy of living. Ocean depth and happiest rest. Thou the Father. Thou, our, uh, thou the Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love thee, each other. Lift us to the joy divine. I invite you to join me as we rise. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We, your people, have come together this morning on this holy day to worship you. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and forgive us our trespasses, and cause your face to shine upon us. We praise you today, for you have been gracious to us. You've brought us through the week and enabled us to be, to, to be here to lift our voices in praise and adoration to your glorious name. Father, all of our brothers and sisters are not here with us today on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Some are ill and are in need of your healing touch. Some are sick at heart and need your comfort. You told us to call on you in the time of trouble. And so we lift up those of our members who are in need of your help today. We present to your throne the one who will break the bread of life to us. Please pour out your Holy Spirit on him so that the message he presents will be from your throne and will reach our hearts. We thank you for blessing us as we worship you today. We ask these petitions with thanksgiving through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In his name we pray, amen and amen. Remain standing for the hymn of praise. On the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal mercies, let your praises reign. Yes, I will. 
put out and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Oh, I'm standing, standing Standing on the promises of God Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's so strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's word, standing on the promises of God. Oh, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises. I'd like to hear the ladies on the chorus. Okay, gentlemen, it's your turn now. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm All of us together, one more time. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, you all can do better than that. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, let's one more time. One more time. Happy Sabbath, church. All right, praise God. Praise God. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord on this Sabbath morning, the 16th of July, 2022. Amen? And I'm so happy to see all of your smiling faces, that are, or some of your smiling faces. <laughs> If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're actually happy to be in the presence of God, say praise the Lord. Praise Somebody Lord. say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. You know, God has been good. Amen? Amen. You know, my wife actually had been sick with the kidney stones, but by the grace of God, she is free of kidney stones. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only that, but, you know, she actually had the stent in. They had to have the stent, but they removed it. And so she actually is free. You know, that's, that's, God is good. Amen. My children are okay. They've been sick, but they're here. Well, my two oldest sons are here today. Amen. And my daughter, she wasn't able to, she, she's, she's with my wife still, but, but they're doing better. Praise God. And I thank the Lord for that. I'm so happy to see all of our guests here. If you are a guest... We want you to invite, we invite you to stand so we can recognize you. Stand if you're a guest in the house of the Lord. Stand so we can recognize you all. Praise God. Praise God. All right, all right, all right. 
if we can get a mic, we want to actually ask you to tell us who you are and tell us where you're from. Tell us who you are and tell us where you're from. You can just go ahead. We'll, we're going to start from over there with my sister. And we're going to ask her, tell us who you are. We'll actually go back and forth, maybe. Uh, tell us who you are and tell us where you're from. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. My name is Tishana. I am from the Alexandria SDA Church in Jamaica. What was the name of the church? Alexandria. Alexandria. Okay, all right, all right. Praise God. All right. Amen. Hi. Well, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. So my name is April, and this is my family, and we are from Mexico. All right. Amen. Amen. This is International Sabbath. We're just calling it International Sabbath. What, what part of Mexico? KCU Dad in Mexico. Oh, Montemorelos. Montemorelos. Oh, okay. The college. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, Dios te bendiga. We're so happy to have you with us on, on this Sabbath in our church. We pray that you come back. Amen. Are you all well, visiting or do you live here? Two no, vives? We're just, we're just visiting. All right. All right. Well, praise God. We're so happy to have you here. Amen. God bless you. Uh, and tell us who this uh, lovely couple is right here. We are the gardeners. Gardeners, amen. And we're visited from Alabama. Oh, amen, amen. What what part of Alabama? Uh, Cottonwood. Cottonwood, okay. I used to pastor in Dothan, so praise the Lord, amen. It's so good to have you with us on this Sabbath. All right, tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. All right, my name is Josh, and this is actually my second visit here, but this is my family's first visit. Okay, amen. So I, I don't really consider us guests anymore because I think we found the home. You guys are wonderful people with wonderful hearts. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God, amen. All right, well, we're so thankful. Um, I'm going to, because we, you know, we, we want you to actually turn, if you're close to them, we want you to give them a, a, a wave. Can you give them a wave? <laughs> Give them a wave and just welcome them to the house of the Lord on this Sabbath morning. All right, now, you know what? I don't know if we did it. I don't know if we did it or not. But we have some people who had birthdays in the month of July. And if you had a birthday in the month, wow, before we even, you know, the Bible says, before you call, I will answer. <laughs> so but if you have a birthday in the month of July, we're inviting you to stand to your feet. All those with birthdays in the month of, of July. And you can't, I'm going to, I like to name them all, so I'm just going to go starting with Kendrasia Boatwright. Where are you at? Kendrasia. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Kendrasia Boatwright. Monica Gilmore. Not here. Leanne Myatt. Not here. Alex Redmond. Stephanie Fountain Lee. All right. All right. Her birthday is on, was on the 11th. Tyree McBride on the 11th, Yvette Samuels the 14th, Jacob Lee on today, as well as Antonio Rivers, Marion Boatwright, where are you at? I know where you're at. I'm right. Marion Boatwright on the 17th, Francis Knight, my niece, and my other niece, Cameron Knight's on the 19th, Frank McGinnis Jr. on the 19th, Mary Hawkins on the 21st. Lisa Palingo, hello. She was she was up on her feet soon. On the 24th, next Sunday. Is that next Sunday? 55 and alive. All right, all right. Jeff Chamberlain on the 26th. Lawrence Jackson on the 26th. Kimberly Wilson on the 27th. Siani Boatwright, where is she at? Is she here, Siani Boatwright? She's in the back. On the 28th, and Nathaniel Davis on the 29th. Praise God, amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we got somebody else. Sister Green. Sister Green. On the, on the 30th. All right, all right, all right. Now, I'm not going to ask. I don't ask women their age, you know, but. No. Woo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now some of the, so, so for you and you, Sister Pink Lingo and Sister Green, what we're going to ask is after church, if you can give us the fountain of youth. Give us the secrets to the fountain of youth. We'd like to actually hear from you. Amen. All right. Praise God. Let's sing. Can we sing happy birthday to these people? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you and many more. Amen, amen, amen. You know, friends, you know, we take it for granted that we actually live another year. And I don't say that flippantly. I got a phone call 
Actually, I called my dad this morning, and I was on the phone with him. He said, you know what? I was wanting to tell you that this dear sister that I've known for years, she passed away. And I was just shocked. Um, Rosalind Anderson, she passed away. And I was just so, I was just so, so shocked. And, 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 you know, she wasn't really that old. But uh, she got Alzheimer's and it just took her out. And, you know, so, friends, we have to take life seriously. Amen? Because just at the moment when you think you'll be here forever, you find out you're not immortal. Amen? And so let's make our calling and election sure. Because at any moment, we could be saying goodbye for the very last time. I'm going to actually say just a few, a few announcements I want to make. First of all, immediately after church, I'm going to ask for our church members to re, uh, remain here. I have some brief business we have to take care of. So immediately after church, we're asking you to, re, to remain by. At 7 o'clock this evening, what time did I say? We're going to have AYS. I want to have AYS all the time. Our young people need something. Amen? So we're inviting you, if, you're, if you've got some young people, come on back at 7 o'clock this evening. We're going to have AYS, and you don't want to miss it. I believe we have some food afterwards. But, uh, but we're inviting you to come back at 7 o'clock this evening and be blessed. For our board tomorrow at 9 a.m., we're going to be having our board meeting via Zoom. And so if you're part of the board, be aware of that, that on 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're having our board meeting. Also, I want to actually say praise the Lord for our media team. Some of you all actually got a chance. Let's, can we give a hand? Our media team is doing excellent work by the grace of God. They're getting better and better every week. And I wanted to say we want to do something spectacular. We're, we're, we're actually trying to recruit some young people. We want some young people. If you're a young person and you'd like to be a part of doing the announcements we want to do a video announcements and we'd like to do them during the week we air them on sabbath if you're interested in being a part of that just please see me afterwards we want to actually get you involved in our services amen and so actually if you if you if you're a young person or you know a young person but please actually see me after church and we want want to get you involved we're also doing this courthouse ministry myself sister shumo we had a little help we had a little help this uh this week and we had a great time and so if you're we, we what we do is we just go to the courthouse we we pray for people we get their information and we also give out water free water to the people and it's just a wonderful ministry some of these people are actually going through some tough times divorce some people are getting married but some people are getting divorced and we're inviting you if you're interested in being a part of that uh, just just talk to me we want to get you involved we've been going on Monday and Wednesday if we have more volunteers we could go on other days as well but it's really been a blessing for each and every person involved also on tomorrow we are doing the jail ministry jail ministry at 8 o'clock and the Lord has been falling powerfully there in the jail ministry I tell you what the Bible says I, I was hungry and you what fed me I was sick and you what you visited me I was in prison and you came unto me and as much as you've done it unto the least of these my brother you've done it unto who unto me and so God has called us to be his hands and his feet to minister to hurting people so if you're interested in being part of any one of these ministries please after church see me we want to get you involved in some way shape or form amen God bless you we're going to continue with the program um, at this time we have something that's not on the program I'm inviting our young people come down here to the front we're having a children's story so we're inviting our young people come on down to the front Jesus loves me Jesus loves me. for the Bible tells me so little ones to all right all right they are weak he is strong yes jesus loves me yes she jesus loves me for the bible tells me so hello boys and girls 
Are there are there any kids? Hello, boys and girls. Okay, I mean, I think there's some kids. I hear, I heard. First, I, first I didn't hear anything. Hello, boys and girls. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I want to pray for you guys before we actually have this little children's story. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much, so much for these young kids. And Lord, we're praying for them that as they actually, they can grow up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Be with us now, Lord, as we have this children's story. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You know what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8? You, you want to know what it says? Somebody actually, uh, if somebody has a Bible, I invite one of our people here in the audience. Can you read that for me? 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8. 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8. Okay, go ahead and read it for me. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, have you all, anybody ever watched any of the, your nature shows? Anybody ever watch any of your nature shows? All right. Well, one of the, 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 the best parts of nature shows, watching lions. Watching lions. Anybody ever watched any lions? Anybody ever seen any lions at the zoo? All right, all right. It's an interesting thing about lions because lions are the, the largest cats in Africa. Now, tigers may be a little bit liger, uh, excuse, a little bit larger. And then ligers, is it ligers? I think it's ligers are bigger than even tigers. That's a mixture of a lion and a tiger. Anyway, so the lions, this is what's so interesting about lions. Lions are by themselves not necessarily the most dangerous to your larger animals. But when a lion gets really, really hungry. Anybody hungry, by, by the way, right now? Anybody hungry? Well, just you just got to tough it out. <laughs> anyway, but the lions are interesting because when they get really, really hungry, you know what they'll do? They won't just go after little animals. They'll actually go after big animals. And so this one time, there was this elephant. And you know they call the lion the king of beasts? I don't really believe it's true. I really believe the, the elephant is the king of the land, animal, land animals. And you know what they decided to do? They decided, we're not going after a little animal. We're going after the elephant. And so they all came together, all these lions. It's on this show. It's on a nature show. And they went after this elephant. They jumped on the elephant. And you had them on its back, on its side. And, and the elephant still, I mean, the elephant's so strong, it's carrying about six or seven lions. But they kept on biting and they kept on biting and they kept on hitting it with their paws. <laughs> Until guess what happened? That li that those lions took down that elephant. And the elephant was finally killed and eaten. <laughs> Maybe they used their toothpicks. I'm kidding. But on a serious note, they ate the elephant. And you know what you know what the Bible says? As he just read, the devil is just like a what? Roaring, roaring lion. And just like that lion, the devil is after us. And I don't care how small you are or how big you are, if the devil's hungry enough, he'll go after you. But you know what's amazing? You know what you, know what you can have? 
you can have protection. You know what your protection is? The, devil, the Bible says that he goes about like a roaring lion. But you know what Jesus is? He is the lion. Who said, oh, hallelujah. We, somebody knows what I'm talking He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So my Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, I'm talking about, I mean, it's a lot of them. I mean, it's like a flood of water. All these, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When, 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 when Satan comes like a lion, you sin the lion. And you say it in the name of Jesus. Let me hear you all say it. In the name of Jesus. No, no, y'all. Come on. I mean, you guys got to say it like you mean it. In the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me, Satan. And you know what the devil has to do? He has to, he has to run. Amen? So, so, so from now on, when Satan comes like a lion, you send the one who is a lion. Can you do that for me? Send the one who is a lion and let him fight your battles. Amen? Who can I get to pray for me? Who, who can I get to pray for me? All right, Sam, you wanted to, did you raise your hand? I don't know. I'm not at, Did you raise your hand? Okay, come on up here. And who else wants to come? I need somebody else. Isaiah, are you, are you volunteering? <laughs> Oh, who else? Who else? Who else? Antonio? Going once? Going twice? All right. Can we get you, Soraya? <laughs> All right. All right, Sam, go ahead and pray for it. Thank you for this day. I thank you for the Sabbath and this beautiful day. Help us to have the wonderful Sabbath. Amen. 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 You all may go back to your seats at this time. Children of the world. Wonderful and beautiful Sabbath day it is. And what is even more wonderful is to see all of the beautiful, handsome, and, and, and pretty faces out in the audience. And in the choir stand, too. I, I don't want to forget the choir stand. Choir behind me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful day. And I tell you, uh, it may have been raining all week. But you know what? No matter what storm comes, we can always depend on one thing. Our God is an unchanging God, and the sun will come through. Amen? So we just praise God and give him all the thanks and the wonderful blessings that he has poured down upon us. And, and I tell you all, we come to this time of tithe and offering, and we know that our God is almighty he has everything he owns the cattle on a thousand hills but that's just on earth our God owns the universe amen so everything is his but he wants us to participate in our own salvation amen and so he set up a way that all of the blessings that he would pour down upon us all he asks is just 10% 10% of what he blesses you with. And then sometimes you just feel so good. Amen. You just feel so good you want to give a wonderful offering. And I tell you, I just uh, think on, on my life and, and God has blessed me with a wonderful career in the military, 24 years. And, and all the blessings of health and wealth and, and even a, a, a job after that. So he's, he's poured down many, many blessings upon me. And he's poured down many, many blessings upon all. And all he asks is that you give 10%. And he will pour down so many blessings upon you that you won't even be able to take it. And we have several ways 
of, of returning to God what he has given to us. We have our church website, which is Jordan Street Seven Day Adventist Church dot org. Uh, you can easily uh, go on your phones, your computers, your laptops, and your tablets and access giving online. We have regular mail, which is 1275 East Jordan Street. It's so wonderful to have you in this beautiful location. The storm tried to take us away, but God returned us, and, and we're still standing, amen, standing in this wonderful community. You can also give on Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign, J-S-S-D-A-C. And of course, today on his wonderful and beautiful Sabbath day, if we read in Malachi, the third chapter, we hear God say, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. We're asking for our deacons and ushers to please come forth and receive the tithes and offering of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you for being our creator, first of all, Father. Lord, for creating the DNA that has made each and every one of us your servants here on earth. Father, we just want to thank you for life, health, and strength, for being in our right mind. And Father, as we continue to grow in your house of prayer here at Jordan Street, Lord, we just ask, Father, that you make your presence known. Father, you make your presence known as Jordan Street continues to stand and grow. Father, that you make your presence known by whatever tithe and offering is given. Lord, that you stretch it. Father, you stretch it so that we may take your word throughout the community, throughout the city, Lord, and throughout the world. Father, we thank you for the ministry that you have allowed us to take forth, even to those in other countries. And Father God, Lord, we just thank you for blessing each and every person that's here. Father, we know that some could not make it. And Father, wherever they are in their place, God, we ask that you touch them because you are an omnipresent God. Lord, and now, as we take your offering, please bless it. Bless those that have to give and bless those that have not to give this morning, Father. But we know that you will bless them with the ability to give in your time. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave all in all, sacrificed himself so that his blood may allow us a chance to be restored and be with you forever in your kingdom, for your kingdom is not of this world. Lord, we pray this in your holy name and in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.
And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me.
Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that you know us and that we're on your mind all the time. We thank you, dear God. Lord, you never sleep or slumber because you're thinking about us. But Lord, we're praying, dear God, that, Lord, just like you think about us, that you'd help us to think more about you. Help us, Lord, to have your name in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, I pray that you would forgive me for my sins. And we're asking, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that everything that is unlike you, that you would remove it from this place. We're asking, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that every unclean spirit you will kick out. And that the Holy Spirit, Lord, will come in even more. And Lord, we're praying, dear God, that you would keep us awake and make the word clear and make it plain. Speak to our hearts as only you can. Transform us. Hide me behind the cross. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Before I actually speak, I want to let you know that immediately after church, if you um, have a, wanting a t-shirt, I believe it is, um, we're going to be having this meeting, and if you need a t-shirt, a new church t-shirt, I believe we have those for those who got them. We don't. Okay. Yes, for the ones who pay for them. Yes, absolutely. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to invite you all to stand as we read God's word. 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8. We read it earlier. And we're going to read it again. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 beginning with verse number 8. And we'll also go to chapter uh, to verse 9 as well. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and verse 9. And what a blessing it is to have all of our visitors here. And uh, 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says these words. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom... He may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk on the subject of the hunt. The hunt. The hunt. It's been called the king of beasts. The king of beasts. And for a good reason. They're... they're the, 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 the most renowned thing about the lion is its regal bearing. You look at a lion, and it just almost looks kingly. You see the mane of that lion. It has a kingly look to it. And, and many times in the African grasslands, it just blows, and it just actually gives it this uh, regal bearing. But not only that, but it's the apex predator in Africa, the African male lion. The lion's habitat has le lessened over the course of centuries, though. You know, it used to be that the lions were not only in Africa, but they were also in Europe. And they're all over Asia, but, you know, gradually with the increase of people going on to the lion's, uh, lion's property, shall we say, or territory, encroaching on their territory, the lion, you know, you have the two different responses of individuals or even animals, fight or what? Flight. In the case of the lion, they said, we're going to fly from nobody. <laughs> and they decided to fight. But sadly, you know, fighting against humans has not always been that successful. And so the lions have been killed by who knows how many thousands. In fact, now in India, or excuse me, in all of Asia, there's probably only about 250 lions left. They're in the Gear Forest in India, the Gear Forest in India, these Asiatic lions. But it used to be that they were all over Southeast Asia. 
It's a game reserve there in, in India. And even in Africa, where you have the African line, and it used to be that they were all over the entire continent. Now they're only actually covering about uh, a small, about 90, 94% less territory than they used to cover. But they're known to prey on just about anything, including human beings. The list of animals is as varied as mice, ostriches, snakes, buffalo, zebra, warthog, impala, gazelle, and a pride of lions, as I said before. They've actually even been known to take down elephant. Lions are some really tough animals, and they can accelerate to full speed really fast, but they don't have the stamina, so they can only last for so long. So what they usually do is they result to other means to actually accomplish the task of taking out their prey. And we want to look at these tasks because, friends, these th same ways that the lion takes down its prey is the way the devil takes down human beings. So I want you to follow along with me. In fact, in fact, if you have a pencil and some paper, take this stuff down. Down, because, friends, this is very important that you get this. I'm going to take my time. Number one, here's the first way that lions actually attack their prey, and they're successful. Number one, you ready? All right, somebody said no, so I'm going to wait a few seconds. All right, I want you all to take notes. You all really need to take and you need to go home and study this. So I'm taking my time so you all can get it. Here's the first way. Lions are the masters of the art of concealment. Let me, ref let me repeat that again. Lions are the masters of the art of concealment. What did I say? Lions are the masters of the art of what? Concealment. concealment. You see, the African grasslands are a golden brown color. And, you know, they actually sway in the breezes there in Africa. And visitors, when they come to the safaris of Africa, if you ever get a chance to go to the safaris of Africa, it's interesting. You can actually even see it on video. You'll actually be probably within 20 or 30 feet of an African lion, and you very well may not even see it because it looks the same color as the grasses in which it's actually in. And sometimes the only reason that you'll even know it's there is when you start seeing its actual ear start flapping. Otherwise, you may not even know it's there. This concealment of the lion leads to prey becoming unaware of the predator's presence. And get this, friends, because they don't know that the lion is there, many people, excuse me, prey have become comfortable. Can I say that? Let me say that word again. They have become comfortable because they had no idea that a predator was right there on their tracks. In the same manner, Satan conceals his presence in such deep camouflage until many times we're not even aware that the devil is right beside us. Can I just, I'm just talking real. Ellen White. Great Controversy, page 518. I'm just going to read this. I want you to get this stuff. Get this stuff. The scriptures declare that upon one occasion when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came also among them. Not to bow before the eternal king, but to further his own malicious designs against the righteous. With the same object, he, now listen to this, friends. You all need to get this. With the same object, he is in attendance when men assemble for the worship of God. Stop for a second. That means that right here, right now, there are not only people here, and there's not only good angels here, but there are evil angels right in this building we can't even see. Let me go on. Like a skillful general, he lays his plans beforehand. As he sees the messenger of God searching the scriptures, he takes note of the subject to be presented to the people. Then he employs all his, 
his cunning and shrewdness so to control circumstances that the message may not reach those whom he is deceiving on that very point. The one who most needs the warning will be urged into some business transaction which requires his presence or will by some other means pre be prevented from hearing the words that might prove to him a savor of life unto life. Get this. Can we, can we, can we talk? What that's su suggesting is, is sometimes we wonder why it is that right when the sermon is about to be preached, you get a phone call. Or why, right when the sermon gets ready to be preached, before you were wide awake and you could hear everything that was going on and the music, and you were up on your feet, hallelujah. But right when the sermon gets ready to be preached, you get sleepy. And we wonder why that is. It's not just any normal happenstance, friends. This is because there is a devil who is doing all he can to distract you and me from hearing the word of God. And it's happened to me. And we wonder why it is. It's because, friends, it's a great controversy. And the devil is playing for keeps. Did you know that? The devil is trying to take people out. And he knows that this sermon, whatever the sermon might be, might be a savor of life unto life for you. So he's got to do all he can to keep you from hearing that message. And you've got to decide in your mind, I'm not going to let anything or anybody distract me from hearing God's word. Sometimes, friends, you've got to turn your phone off. Are you with me, friends? Sometimes it's not. It's sometimes it's even little kids, and you wonder why your kids starting to act bad at very at that very moment. And all the other part of the service, he was fine. I remember. I never will forget. Sister Watson, she she knows. I never will forget. I, was, I used to preach in Kentucky at this particular church, and right when I'd be getting ready to preach, this child would lose his mind. The same thing happened in Dothan, Alabama. The child lost their mind and you were wondering what is going on until you recognize that we are engaged in spiritual warfare did you know and that's why i praise the lord for our prayer team that's why friends when when a sermon is getting ready to be preached that's why people need to be on the ground praying because the prayers of the saints can hold back the devil and his evil angels. Because if our eyes were open, we would see that sometimes there's somebody who is in that church who is actually on the verge of passing from death to life. And he doesn't want them to pass from death to life. So he's doing all he can to distract them some way. Have their child to go crazy. Have somebody to call them. Have something to happen to keep them from giving their life to Jesus. So you got to be praying that much harder, friends, because the prayers of the saints can make a huge difference in the life of God's people. This is every time we preach, and I'm preaching as much to myself, but every time we step into the pulpit and share God's word, it is spiritual warfare. I never will forget, I was actually up in, I was up in Michigan. I was um, in the seminary at the time, and actually... We went to camp. I've taught, told this story before. We went to camp meeting and at Cosopolis, Michigan, Lake Region Camp Meeting. And I never will forget Elder E.E. E. Cleveland preached, powerful sermon. You know, when Cleveland would preach, like half the church would come down. You're like, what in the world's going on? But anyway, after service, and I guess it was because the devil was angry, there was these young people sitting underneath this tent. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was like the fastest storm came up. And it's, it, it, it quickly, it was, one, it was a fast-moving storm. It went over the, over the camp. And it, the winds were so powerful, it knocked down the tent. And do you know what happened? One of those kids got hit with one of the poles, and he ended up getting killed. In fact, I was probably from here I would say maybe 200 yards or 100 yards away from the tent, and I saw it fall. And it was amazing because Satan is playing for keeps. So, so the first of all thing, uh, friends, the, the first thing is the devil, excuse me, the lion is the art or the master of concealment. You don't realize that he's even there. And sometimes we may not even realize that we ourselves could actually be used by Satan. 
She goes on to say this. She goes on to say this. None are in, listen to this, friends. None are in greater danger from the influence of evil spirits than those who, notwithstanding the direct and ample testimony of the scriptures, deny the existence and agency of the devil and his angels. So long as we are ignorant of their wiles, they have almost inconceivable advantage. Many give heed to their suggestions while they suppose themselves to be following the dictates of their own wisdom. This is why as we approach the close of time, when Satan is to work with greatest power to deceive and destroy, he spreads everywhere the belief that he does not exist. It is his policy to conceal himself and his manner of working. There is nothing that, listen to this, friends, listen to this. There is nothing that the great deceiver fears more, fears so much, as that we shall become acquainted with his devices. The better to disguise his real character and purposes, he has caused himself to be so represented as to excite no stronger emotion than ridicule or contempt. He is well pleased to be painted as a ludicrous or loathsome object, misshapen, half animal and half human. He is pleased to hear his name used in sport and mockery by those who think themselves intelligent and well informed. Let me talk. Let me talk. Let me, let's, let's, we're, we're just talking. Get this, friends. Many times, we don't realize it, but we are actually looking at the devil in the programs that we bring in our house. The PlayStation stuff that you're allowing your children to play. That stuff that's on the internet, we're allowing people to actually watch. The stuff on the radio that you're listening to, and you just think it's, oh, it's, it's, it's no big deal. And we don't realize, friends, that many times we are actually inviting the devil into our homes. You wonder why these young people are going out there and shooting up places. Yes, it's because there's just the actual, there, there's so many guns available. But not only that, friends, it's because many young people's minds have been invaded by evil spirits. And you've got to be that much more careful of, of saying, no, 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 friends, not in my house. It's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. You've got to actually be that much more vigilant. The Bible says what? Be vigilant. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You, you, you can't watch that show, son. No, 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 you can't watch that so, show, daughter. I, I know you like it, but no, because, friends, get this. To the carnal mind, these shows appeal to the carnal mind. Isn't that right? Uh, violence appeals to us. Am I right? Spiritualism, which is in so much stuff, it appeals to young people. And you wonder why it is that actually witchcraft is on the rise. It's because all this stuff is appealing to the carnal mind. You know, can I, Harry Potter is witchcraft. Am I, am I right? Lord of the Rings is witchcraft. A whole lot of shows are witchcraft. And, friends, we actually, you have to be that vigilant, friends. You know, I never, my, my sons, one of their favorite shows is Ryan's Toys. But, but you know, many of these different programs, they actually have uh, commercials. And this is on watching it on YouTube. Some of the commercials, I, I, I know, I'm, can I, I'm just going somewhere. I, I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. But a whole lot of Disney, a whole lot of Disney is nothing but witchcraft. <laughs> and it's actually, it, it, what it's doing is, it's making people comfortable with actually looking at things that actually seem, in, you know, it, it, they're trying to make it innocent to dabble in devilish things. And people don't realize that Satan is right there concealed. He's right there, real close. And they're actually just, they, they, and, and we don't even realize his, his ears are actually flopping. <laughs> if you were actually, and, and he's getting ready to strike. Let me go on, let me go on. Let me, let me, let me, let me read one more, one more quote. And then I'm going I'm to go on to the next quality of a lion. We carefully secure houses with bolts and locks to protect our property and our lives from evil men. But we seldom think of the evil angels who are constantly seeking access to us and against whose attacks 
we have in our own strength no method of defense. If permitted, they can distract their minds, disorder and torment our bodies, destroy our possessions and our lives. Their only delight is in misery and destruction. That's why, friends, you've got to put the blood on the doorpost and on the lintel of your house every day. Every, every morning before you, your children go to school, especially in a day and age when you may not actually see your child come home from school, you better actually get up before they go anywhere and say, we're getting on our knees. We're spending some time with the Lord. We're spending the, some time in God's word, friends, because, friends, you got to spend some, that, that time with God. If they don't plead the blood over themselves, you plead the blood over them. Maybe your prayers might keep that bullet that's actually aimed straight at them from hitting them. Somebody knows maybe that prayer might keep them from getting coronavirus. Maybe that prayer might keep them from sleeping with somebody and getting some STD. Maybe that prayer might keep them from actually bowing to peer pressure and taking some drug or something that messes up their minds. Actually, your prayers and your spending time with the Lord. Second characteristic of the, of the line, second characteristic. Hope you're taking notes. Uh, uh, the second characteristic of, of, of hunting lions is that they take their time and they study their prey. They take their time and study their prey. I want you to go with me your Bible to the book of Judges 15. Go with me to Judges the 15th chapter. My brother talks about this. He always talks about this, and this is... This is a crazy scripture. Judges chapter 15 and verse number 20. This is talking about Samson. And I want you to hear what the scripture says here in Judges 15 and verse number 20. Say amen if you're there. Say wait if you're still turning. All right. Judges chapter 15, verse number 20. This is talking about Samson. Now, Samson had just killed a 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. And the Bible says in verse 20, And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines for how many years? Did you hear that? 20 years. So get what the Bible is essentially saying, friends. The Bible is suggesting that Samson, his reign, his, his reign as the judge of Israel was not just for a short time. It wasn't like his reign, you know, he just failed just instantly and that was. No, the Bible says for 20 years, Samson was leading the nation of Israel. But you know that whole entire time that he was leading the nation of Israel, you know what the devil was doing? He was probably sitting back studying him. Do you, know that, do you know that there's times that the devil does not tempt you? Ponder that for a second. There are times that Satan will actually leave you alone. I got proof. I got proof. I got proof. Go with me in your Bible to the book of Luke. Go with me in your Bible to the book. I got proof. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 4. I got, I got proof. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 13. There are times that Satan will not mess with you. Luke 4, verse 13. Luke 4, verse 13. Here's what the Bible says. It says, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, what did he do? He departed from him for what? Season. In other words, he said, not because, now in the case of Jesus, because he couldn't, he couldn't beat him. But in the case of us, sometimes the devil will step back for a season, but he's studying ways. I'm studying for a way to actually go for the kill. And you know what? Actually, a lion, if you ever watch lions, what lions will do is sometimes they'll just be sitting there relaxed. You all have seen it. Also, they'll be sitting under a tree, and they'll just be watching, and the prey won't even be too far away, and they will actually leave the zebra alone. They will actually leave the gazelle alone, the impala. They won't even mess with the impala. And it'll get to the point where the impala thinks everything is okay. He must be full. He's not going to bug me. He's not going to mess with me. I'm not to be about to be his dinner. I can go ahead about my business. But that lion is studying that animal. And the devil studies us. 
Did you know he studies you, friends? And he's actually just studying how he's studying what actually makes your eyes tingle. He can't read your mind, but he can sure look at your eyes. Did you know that, friends? And, and, and the devil knows what makes somebody's eyes tingle. Brothers, he knows what sister causes you to actually tense up. <laughs> Sisters, he knows what brother causes you to sweat a little bit extra. Am I talking to somebody? Am I, am I right? Am I he knows exactly what type of food to put right in front of your, in, in front of your face. Am I right? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And, 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 and so he keeps on studying you, waiting for the, 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 the best time. And guess what? All this time, in the case of Samson, it probably got to the point with Samson that he thought that he was standing on his own. But we know what the Bible says. Wherefore, to him that thinks you stand. Take heed lest you fall at the very moment when you think you've got it all together. At the very moment when you think that the devil could not bring me down and you're bragging about how tough you are and how much victory you've already actually had in your life. Don't brag, friends. Get on your knees and pray, friends, because you better recognize that you are no match in your own strength for the devil. And the devil knows that. If he can cause a third of the angels to get kicked out of heaven, if he can cause Eve and Adam to eat of that fruit, then don't think that you are actually more, you're, you're stronger than they are. Now the characteristic of the lion, we're talking about the lion, is that when it hunts, lions hunt, lions hunt, excuse me, in organized packs as opposed to by themselves. Lions don't hunt by themselves. They they, they hunt in prods. Do you know, actually, one female lion by herself will probably kill one, in every, kill one animal in, in every five tries. But if they hunt in a pride or a group, they kill usually three animals in every five tries. So in other words, friends... They actually hunt together. And it's amazing. You can see some videos. You can watch videos about this. You actually think it's just one lion, but it's several lions. Several of them will be hidden there, and that one will be actually chasing it. And many times, the animal will be running from the one lion, not realizing that hidden in the grass, not, far, not too far away, where the animal's running to are about four or five more lions waiting for him to get there so they can all jump and strike against that animal. And the devil is the same way. The devil doesn't just actually attack you by himself. What does the Bible say in Matthew 12? Go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're talking about the lion. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, 43. Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 43. It says this. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a what? He walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it what? Empty, swept, and what? Garnished. So he comes in by himself. Is that what the Bible says? What does the Bible say in verse 45? Then goeth he and taketh with himself what? Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it also be unto this whole wicked generation. In other words, what the Bible says is, friends, is that, friends, when, when, when God delivers you from something, when God sets you free from drugs, or when God sets you free from sexual sin, or when God sets you free from alcohol, and now you finally have your temple cleansed of all the wicked spirits that have controlled you, you've got to fill yourself up with Jesus. Because if you don't fill yourself up with Jesus, that evil spirit is looking to see, okay, is somebody living in that house? Again, I don't see anybody in the bedroom. There's nobody in the kitchen. 
wait a minute, there, there's nobody in the bathroom of that house. That's an empty house. You know what many Christians are, or, or, or so-called Christians are? We're empty houses. And we shouldn't be empty houses, friends. You've got to be filled up with Jesus. And the way you get filled with Jesus, friends, is spending time on your knees, spending time in the Word of God, coming to church on Sabbath, spending time with the fellow believers. You've got to fill yourself up with Jesus. Because if you don't, that wicked spirit, he ain't coming by himself. He's not, no, no, no. He's, he's going to be, hey, 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 come on over here. No, you too. And I'm talking about these are even wickeder spirits. So it used to be that you used to just struggle with one sin. Now you find yourself struggling not just with sexual sin, but you struggle with drugs, and you struggle with alcohol, and you struggle with violent activities, and you struggle with watching things you shouldn't watch, and you struggle, and you're like, why in the world is this happening? It's because you had an empty house. Let me go on. So... And this is a key one. This is a key one, Elder. <laughs> the lions, get this one. They try to separate animals from the herd. So, so you'll have some buffaloes all running together. I mean, a whole lot of buffaloes, they'll be running together. Or a whole lot of um, wildebeest. Well, I mean, they'll be running in a, in a group together. And what this... Lion will do is it, it will run towards these animals and it'll spook them. And one of them, instead of staying with the herd, Sister Young, that animal will find himself running away from the herd. And when he's all by himself, now he's an easy prey because the pride is like, all right, we're about to tear this little animal apart. If that buffalo with those horns was actually with the, with the fellow members of the herd, they might have been a pretty good match for the lions, but by himself, y'all know what I'm talking about, but by himself, by that animal, uh, by, by himself, he may not be able to match wits with all those lions, and so too, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is and much the more as we see the day approaching. You know what the devil would love for you to do? Keep you away from the body of believers. Keep you away from coming to church. And he'll do all sorts of tactics to actually make sure you don't come to the church. So get, get, get what I'm saying. He'll actually cause somebody in the church to say something, and you'll let what that person said cause you not to come to church. Don't do that. Or he'll, he'll have somebody to say something critical about, about the church. Or you'll find one little fault in the church, and because of that one little fault in the church, you'll decide, I'm not going back to church, but you can't do that. I've decided that whether or not everybody in the church is perfect or not, I'm coming to the house of God. I'm going to be in the church of God. I'm going to be in the presence of God because I don't come for you. I come for him. I come to meet Jesus. And if I can bless somebody else, praise the Lord. But I'm coming to the church to meet Jesus. I'm coming to church to praise the Lord. I'm coming to church to lift up holy hands. I'm coming to church because burdens are lifted at Calvary. I'm coming to church because I want to actually give God the praise that is due unto his name. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'm going to stay with the herd. Yes, 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 I, 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 I got to plant my feet here for a second. Because, friends, there, I, I hear people talking about, oh, the, the church is this and the church is that and the church is the other. Show me one perfect church. If you can show me the perfect church, I would love to go there because that's heaven. Because there is no perfect church because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the church you think is perfect and the church you think that is so good, when you go there and all the veneer is lifted, you'll be surprised that they got issues too. And many times they got bigger issues in the church that you're leaving. 
heard about this family where they actually were, they, they, they weren't satisfied at this church, so they went to another church, and they went to another church, and they went to another church. And, he, and, and the reality is, friends, people are church hopping. Because of the fact that they're not satisfied. And you know what sometimes is the issue? It may not be the church that's the issue. The, ch the issue might be you. And you might have to ask the Lord, Lord, change me. Because I'm the issue. I got issues and I got problems. Maybe there's something inside of me that you need to change. Take away from me my critical spirit. And because here's the thing, friends, God may have brought you to be a blessing yourself. Lord, what do you what you bring me here for? Because God's given you talents and you abilities and you gifts. He would love for us to actually separate. Because when you're all by yourself. And, and I, I guess I need to talk. I need to take it a step further. Somebody sent me a, a text message. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. They sent me the text message, and it was about this man. He was talking about how it's fascinating how the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus vaccine, is, it, it, it's powerful enough to help you when you go everywhere else. So you can go to the store because you got the vaccine. You can go to the fairgrounds because you got the vaccine. You can go to the amusement park because you got the vaccine. You can go everywhere else. But when it comes to the church, I can't come to the church because I don't think the vaccine is powerful enough to keep me from getting the coronavirus in church. And so we make every type of excuse to keep away from the house of God, friends. And as much as I like school and all these other places, they don't have the blessings for me that I have in the house of God. I can get something here. I can't get anywhere else. I can meet the, uh, hallelujah, I can meet the king of kings and the Lord of lords in the house of God. I can actually fellowship with fellow believers in the house of God. There's something about being in church. I have a party in here I can't have anywhere else. Yes, I, I, you know, I, I love when the Warriors won the finals, and I was happy, friends. But when I hear that Jesus, hallelujah, he hung on Calvary's cross, and then he came up out of the grave with all power in his hands. I can celebrate that even more. I'm thankful. So don't let, you know, don't let the coronavirus be an excuse from coming to church. I'm not trying to say if you're coughing and you're, you know, you know, <laughs> but you know, you know, if you're coughing, you put on a mask. <laughs> but be in the house of God. He said, be sober. He said, be sober. And I never thought about this. Be sober, Sister Watson. That means don't be drunk. Now, I don't drink. And most of you don't drink, so what was he talking about? Was he saying, don't drink alcohol? For some people, he was. But you know what is alcohol, biblically? False teachings he's essentially saying don't imbibe false teachings the wine of Babylon do you know you don't even have to hear sermons to actually imbibe the wine of Babylon there's so much falsity in what we watch and we wonder why it is that sometimes where it used to be clear that marriage was between a man and a woman. And there used to be no questions in the minds of some people that we know that homosexuality is a sin. Because so many people have been imbibing the wine of CNN. Did I say that? Did I just say Did I just say Did I say CNN? Or the wine of Fox News. Or, I mean, I, am I saying this stuff? Elder, or the wine of MSNBC or, 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 or the wine of the latest TV programs that have always have a homosexual on them. Did I, Elder, am I saying that? I, did I say that? Did I say that? When we continue to imbibe stuff 
that, 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 that actually highlights the violence. I'm not, see, obviously I believe in news telling us about the violence. But at the same time, why do I need to actually just fill my mind with more and more violence? Do you know young people, many young people today, by the time they reach the, the age of 18, have imbibed, imbibed tens of thousands of, of, of visual images of violence? So we wonder why it is, or, or the wine of PlayStation. I'm not saying all things on PlayStation are wrong, but I'm talking about a whole, there's a whole lot of these things that, uh, what, what's the name of those, some of those, those, some of those games? I forgot something, uh, I don't remember the names, but there's some names, and somebody knows some of those names of some of those, those, those games that are just violent, and we wonder why it is. He says be sober. That means don't drink it. Because when you start to drink it, you're going to become what? Inebriated. And then he says, be vigilant. Vigilant means be watchful. Have your eyes open. How in the world can you actually be able to see a lion if you're not even watching? And how in the world will you even see the lion as an enemy if you're still drunk? If you're drunk, you'll see the lion. Instead of running, you might even go to the lion and try to pet it. In fact, the lion might think you're crazy. <laughs> Why is he going to pet me? I never will forget this National Geographic. I never will forget this National Geographic. These guys need prayer. <laughs> this National Geographic, there was this show, and the guy said, you know, tonight I'm going out to, 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 to be with the lions. I'm going out and going to get as close as I possibly can to the lions. And I was like, you need serious prayer. <laughs> prayer and fasting. I never will forget that. I'm, I'm telling this story. This isn't about lions. This is another animal. This girl, I was, when I was in the seminary, I was in the library up in, at Andrews. And this young lady, she's from Zambia. I think she's from Zambia or Zimbabwe, one of those two. And she was telling me about the Zambezi River. Zambezi River, actually, I think it's the, uh, the boundary between Zambia and Zimbabwe. And so anyway, what she said was there was this guy. There was this guy. And it was interesting because he said, I'm going to go swim in the Zambezi to the other side. And all the natives, because natives got good sense. They said, no, you don't do that. There's crocodiles. Don't do that. that there's crocodiles. He said, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, let's just say he didn't make it to the other side. <laughs> See, when you're drunk, when, when you're drunk, when you're drunk, that's why he said be sober. When you're drunk, you will do some foolish things. And you will actually think a lion is your friend. Oh, let's go pet the lion. And, 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 I'm talking about the devil will be confused. He'll be like, what is, I, I knew he was, I knew I could get him to sin, but I mean, come on. <laughs> He's now my buddy. <laughs> Are you with me? He said, be sober. And he said, be vigilant. Vigilant, as I said, means watchful. Keep your eyes open because all around you are lions. All around us are lions. In church, there's lions. In your home. <laughs> somebody, I need to say that again because somebody's. In your home are lions. On your job are lions. At your school are some lions. I talked about it though in the children's story. When the lions come, because they're coming. When the lions come and you're running for your life, 
call on the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of David. You could start playing. Call on that lion and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I, I, I'm so glad that I have somebody I can call on. I, I, I've told this story before. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. I was, I've told this story, I think. <clears throat> it wasn't a lion. It was a dog. And it was interesting because this, this dog was a big dog, Elder Sykes. We were, we were uh, you know, we were going from door to door. I was with a friend of mine. He, I think he was the one who was selling. You know, you sell the candies for school and stuff like that. You sell, uh, you sell enough, you can get this toy. If you sell any more, you can get this toy. You, you, anybody know what I'm talking about? You sell a whole lot, you're, gonna, and you're like, man, I can get a, back in the day it was a Walkman. I can get a Walkman. And I remember we were halfway down this driveway. We kind of live in the country, so we were halfway down this driveway. And as we were halfway down this driveway, coming towards us was a monster dog. I mean, you, it was almost half monster, half dog. Or at least it looked that way to me. And it was me and it was a friend of mine. My next door neighbor's name was Josh. And the dog, it got real close. And it looked like we were about to be some meat. <laughs> we decided to use common sense. And instead of actually being a fool, we were backing up. And the dog was coming closer. <laughs> We're backing up, and that dog is continuing to come. And I think we, I believe if I'm not mistaken, we, 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 we finally broke and ran for it. But the thing, get this, friends, but the thing is, you can't outrun a dog. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me bring it to our scripture. You can't outrun a lion. Can I say that? You can't outrun the devil. And we ran and we ran, and this is the honest truth. When we got to the very end of our driveway, and that dog was about was on our tracks. Out of nowhere, my friend Josh's uncle, out of nowhere, he pulled up in his car. I, I don't even know where he came from. He pulled up in his car, and he opened the door, and, and that dog was on our tracks. <laughs> that dog was on our tracks. I never forget. And, and, and he pulled up, opened the door. He said, get in the car, get in the car, get in the car. And we jumped in that car and escaped, escaped that dog. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when, when the devil is on your tracks, and he's about to get you, He's about to take you out. He's about to devour you. He's about to actually, he's about to rip you limb from limb from limb. I need to say it. I'm talking about you got your forelimbs, your legs, and your arms. He's about to take you out. You can call on Jesus. I'm saying, I'm talking to myself. You can call on the name of Jesus. And my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. The righteous will run unto it and find safety, friends. God, Jesus will come in right, right on time, and he'll open up the door, and he'll say, get in, get in, get in. And I can get in Jesus. And anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Anywhere with him, I can freely go. Friends, I'm telling somebody, the devil's been on your tracks. I don't know how. I don't know which way. But he's been trying to take 
you out. He warned, he warned Peter, he warned Peter, and he's probably warning somebody here, Simon, Simon, no, put your name there. Satan hath desired to have you, that he can sift you as wheat. He has been after you. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for you. My Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us. I've been praying for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, strengthen the brother. I'm praying for you. Jesus is praying that you make it. He died on the cross so that you could make it. He shed his precious blood so that you could make it. He actually allowed himself to be spat on so you could make it. He allowed himself to be wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with the stripes, I'm healed. He did all this so that you can make it. You don't have to actually fall to lions, friends, because you got a lion on your side. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. And you don't have to be overcome. My Bible says, now on him that is able to keep you. I got to stop. Now on him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. He's able to keep us from falling. You don't have to be eaten up. You don't have to be a victim or a statistic, friends. You can be an overcomer. And my Bible says to him that overcomes. I'm going to grant to sit with me on my throne. Even as I overcame and I'm sat down with my father on his throne. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. We've gotten comfortable. But sadly, many of us have gotten comfortable too close to predators. You're grazing on grass. But the lion is just a few. Do you know that lions won't even attack unless they're 30, only 30 meters from their victim? But sadly, some of us are closer than that to the devil. Sadly, some of us have been walking right past him. Walking right beside him. And just because he has not gotten up to strike you yet does not mean he's about to. He's plotting your demise. And especially in these last days, the Bible is saying he's working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. That means, friends, that the devil has upped his practices and his plans and his strategies to take out as many people as possible. And you know what my Bible says in Revelation 12, verse 17? It says that the lion, those lions, I'm talking about the devil, he, he, was, he was angry with the woman. Which means that he's especially, tar you know, the, the, the best tasting meat to the devil is church meat. No, I, let me, I, I, you all didn't get that. Let me say it one more time. The best tasting meat to the devil is, is remnant church meat. He loves the meat of those who've kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so he's after them. He said, I've already tasted world meat. That's all right. But I'm especially after church meat. I want some church meat, which means he's after us. But you want to say, Lord, keep me from being meat for the devil. Help me to be an overcomer. My first appeal is for somebody who's never given your life to Jesus. Or maybe you have, but you've never gone all the way. And that may mean baptism. The Bible says, whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. And you want to say, Lord, today I'm not going to fight any war against the pricks. I'm going to surrender. 
I'm inviting you to actually just step out of your seat and meet me here at the front. You want to say, Lord, I want to get baptized. I want to give my life to Jesus in baptism. I want to surrender all to him. Today, as your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, you're praying, you're praying. You're praying and saying, Lord, is it me? And if, if it's you, I want you to step out of your seat while you're praying and come. Respond to the call of the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about anybody else in the building. This is between you and Jesus. This is between you and Jesus. And you want to say, Lord, I hear your still, small voice, and I'm coming home. I want you to move out of your seat and meet me here at the front. A lion is on your tracks. And if you don't surrender your life to Jesus, then he is going to eat you up. But you want to say, Lord, I hear the still, small voice of your Holy Ghost calling, and I'm going to respond. I'm inviting you to step out of your seat wherever you're at, and move and say, yes, Lord, yes to Jesus right now. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting you to come. Where, where are you at? Come. Why don't you come? Why don't you move? Why don't you move? While that, while that appeal is still ongoing, while that appeal is ongoing, there's somebody else. You're in the church, but you've gotten comfortable. You've gotten comfortable. And, and, and because you're comfortable, you don't see the predator who's right there on your tracks. And you want to say, Jesus, wake me up before I get eaten up. Wake me up before I get devoured. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet. You're standing to your feet. You're saying, Lord, wake me up before I get devoured. Wake me up. There's a whole lot of comfortable church members. You want to say, Lord, wake me up. I see it. Praise God. Somebody else wants to say, Lord, wake me up before I get devoured. Wake me up before I get devoured. Wake me up. It may mean he has to shake you up spiritually. I'm inviting you to stand. You want to say, Lord, shake me up. Shake me up so I don't get eaten up. Stand to your feet. Praise God. I see somebody else. Somebody else is standing. Somebody else is saying, Lord, shake me up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody else wants to say, Lord, shake me up before I get devoured. Wherever you're at, just stand to your feet. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Somebody who's actually watching, you want to say, shake me up before I get devoured. You're standing. Somebody else wants to actually, you're at your home. I invite you to share with others. I'm inviting you to share. Facebook, share it. YouTube, share it. Somebody else needs to hear. And somebody else, you want to say, Lord, shake me up before I get eaten up. Wake me up. Because some of us have gotten, we, we've gotten so comfortable with the lions that we've even gone to sleep. We've gone to sleep when we should be awake, getting ready to run if need be. And you want to say, Lord, shake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. Listen, friends, if Peter could be clothed within a stone's throw of Jesus, and yet he was asleep when lions were on his track, don't think that you could possibly not be asleep too and not realize it. And the, and the proof of whether or not you are asleep or not is your prayer life. Jesus said, couldn't you pray with me one hour? He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In other words, what he was saying is, is that you're not ready. Your flesh hasn't been actually has been exercised long enough in this spiritual thing for you to withstand the temptations that are coming. And I'm here to tell somebody, and I just, if you didn't know this, we are on the verge of temptations that will shake the very core of your existence. And if you're not in Jesus Christ, you're not going to stand. You're not going to stand. Think about this for a second. Friends, coronavirus happened overnight. And the whole world was essentially shut down 
overnight. And Ellen White says the last movements will be rapid ones. In other words, friends, we are going to see changes happen overnight. It's almost like the pride of lions. They've all come together in a mega pride. Satan and his evil angels, they've come together and they're planning their final struggle to take out as much prey as possible. Did you know that? And they're aiming for each and every one of us. But you want to, say, you want to stand saying, Lord, shake me, wake me up, wake me up. Stand to your feet. Somebody else wants to stand. I'm, going to get, I'm getting ready to pray. Somebody wants to move. You feel the call of God. Maybe you want baptism. I'm inviting you to actually meet me here at the front right now. I'm inviting you to come. The Holy Ghost is speaking. Father, touch that heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm, getting, I'm, just, I'm just a little bit longer. Somebody wants to move. You want to respond to the Holy Ghost. The Spirit and the bride say come. And you feel the tugging of the Spirit of God. You need to move. You need to come. You need to come. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Just come. Just come. You want to come. Just 30 more seconds. Somebody wants to move. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You need to move. You need to come. Why don't you come? I'm going to pray. As I'm praying, if you want to move, you can. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much, dear God, that, Lord, you've already given us warnings in the word. So that when the devil is on the hunt, he won't take us by surprise. Dear Father, I'm praying for each and every person standing under the sound of my voice. They're standing saying, shake me up. Wake me up. So that before that lion eats me up, I can get out of his territory. I'm praying for each and every other individual. Maybe there is somebody here who would sense the Holy Ghost speaking to their heart. I'm praying that you would trouble them until they make their calling and election sure. And we'll just be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and all the glory. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's have our benediction. Father, we thank you so much, dear God, for your word. And Lord, as we leave this place, may we never leave your presence. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before us, filled with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment of silent meditation. Uh, the ushers will usher you out. We're inviting our church members to please. Oh, we want to actually pray also over the food. We have food in the back. Excuse me. So for those who'd like to stay by, we have food in the fellowship hall. We're going to pray over the food. But we're asking for church members uh, to stay here momentarily afterwards uh, while others are ushered out. Father, we thank you also for the not only the spiritual food, but we're praying. Thank you for the physical food that we're about to uh, receive. May it nourish and give the proper strength to our bodies. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, our food will be in the fellowship hall for those who are visitors. We invite you especially to stay by if you can. We've got some, some, uh, some food prepared for you, and we'd love for you to stay.